What's up everybody, I'm back with another video and unfortunately the first several minutes of this footage disappeared. So you have to bear with me, we're going to talk about it through the thumbnail. So first up, at the top the red thing that you see is an inverter. The thing in the middle that you see is the new EcoFlow alternator charger, which is yes, for all you smarty pants, a DC to DC charger. And the Renergy on the bottom is also a DC to DC charger. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the differences between the three, why you'd use one over the other. Primarily, we'll be focusing on these two right here. Let's get on with the show. Now, the difference between a DC to DC charger and an inverter is that DC to DC chargers take DC input and produce DC output. So it's the same 12 volts to 12 volts. Inverters, on the other hand, go from DC to AC. So they convert 12 volts into 120 volts, which is why you see your DC in here, which would come from the battery and on the other side here you just simply have outlets just like in the house now these on the other hand this as well as this this is for charging other batteries so you'll take alternator power going to the starter battery and then this will convert that power and boost it up and it will then charge another battery now this can also charge power stations because again it's just 120 volts is like being charged in the house but it obviously has a cap every inverter has some type of cap and this is maxed at 500 watts while we're on watts as you can see this is 12 volts times 60 amps is going to be 12.8 volts obviously and this whole contraption is 800 watts and if you recall from the previous video this is also 800 watts now, the reason I wanted to make this video was to explain, because many of you had so much to say in that comment section of the last video, why this made more sense than this. And in this video, I'm going to show you why. First off, we see that there's a humongous size difference, which I said in the comments. Look at this. I mean... Also, look at this, flatter. Now, I will say that this provides for better airflow and cooling these fins. However, if you know anything about MacBooks, for example, they are paper thin as well and they don't overheat. So you don't necessarily need this if your components on the inside have good heat sinks and the casing is made of aluminum which extracts heat from the components on the inside. Now I would have liked to have grabbed the Victron but the it's on back order. They have a new one that's uh, 700 watts on back order. This Renergy is also very new and took two weeks to come uh, but I don't like this one over the Victron, first of all, this is $500. The new Victron is on sale, even though it's back ordered for $328. And the biggest thing I don't like about this is one, it's size, but I don't know how big or small the Victron will be. Um, I couldn't find its uh, dimensions. But it's this knob here. You have to set it for whatever battery you're going to charge. AGM, JL batteries, flooded batteries, lithium ion batteries, or you can have a uh, custom situation going on there also when it comes to installation look at the materials you need to install this and look at what you need to install this this is much easier to install than a system such as this now yes both of these can be customized to be more universal the Renergy itself is going to be more universal when it comes to just charging batteries but again this does a little bit more than just charge batteries. Now I'm going to demonstrate for you one of the features that this has that this does not have. Let's get on with the demonstration. Now here we have a Golden Mate battery. Uh, it's the Orion 1000 and I love, love this thing. First off, 
it has a display. You touch it right here. I still have the little sticker on, and you have a display. Now, I'm this, this is not a review of this because I'm going to do that, but we're this we're going to use this battery for our test today. And the first thing I want to do is I want to show you what charging is like using a battery tender. Uh, well, a battery tender battery charger. Now, this battery charger is only four amps, and if we take a look at the back here, it has an output of 12 volts. So 12 times four is 48. So that is what we can expect as far as watts going into this battery. Let's go ahead and connect it and see what it does. So we have them connected. We can see that it is charging. That's why the light stopped blinking and it's solid. So let's go ahead and push. Oh, there we go. And we can see the input now is actually up to 52 watts. 51, 52. So that's actually going above and beyond and that's quite impressive. Now I want to show you something else that the EcoFlow can do that that Renogy cannot. All right, now so what you see here, I have a Delta 2, I have the alternator charger, I have the Delta 2 plugged into the charger, and I have the cable connected to the battery like you're supposed to do. Now over here on the app, if we touch the alternator charger, we see that it's connected to the power station, which is why this is a proprietary connection. If this was, if we snip the connectors off and connect it to another power station via solar, I don't know whether this would still work. Uh, but we see it's working, but it's obviously not pulling anything from anything because there is no alternator, right? Also, it's completely full. It's at 100%. So what we want to do is reverse charge. We want to go from the power station to the battery. Now, we see that it's pushing out 400, 500 watts. Now, let's go look at the battery. Look, it's awake and it's getting charged at 490, 476. It's going down now, 491. Now, it's at 88%. This is something that the Renogy cannot do. It needs an alternator to charge a battery. It cannot go from a battery to another battery. It needs an alternator to send that voltage. Now with this setup, you can use a power station and you can do what you want. You don't necessarily need a car or an alternator to do such a thing. Now if you're installing this in an RV, most RVs have it where the house battery does get charged from the alternator. So in that situation, you would just connect it to the house battery and it will still work perfectly fine you can pull from the alternator to charge your power station and then you just go into the app like we did earlier to go from the power station to the house battery to make sure that the house battery is charged and it will do it way faster than the alternator would do another thing we can do is we can change the voltage here we can set the voltage to match the car engine voltage depending on what kind of car you have up to 30 volts so yeah so there we go that is something that that can do that that cannot do. We can also see the voltage of the battery at 14 volts. This changed from the alternator to the battery because that's what we're going to. And there you have that. Further displaying the ease of this thing, how automatic it is. Again, with this knob, you got to change things up. And again, the, the Victron is going to be better than the Renogy, in my opinion, especially for the money. That's less money, and then that one is more automatic and smart as well. This is all manual and also way more expensive. Now, back to this inverter here. Now, you might be asking, well, what's the deal with the inverter? I see those pretty cheap. And yes, this at 500 watts was only $60. But here's the issue with this. If you were to use this to try and run some appliance that used up to 500 watts, all right, this is just going to completely pull 500 all the time. It will not be constantly checking in with your alternator to see, hey, bro, can you handle that? It's just going to take it. So you might have issues inside the car with lights dimming and things of that nature. 
these devices, both of these, constantly check back in with the alternator to make sure that they don't overdo it and pull more wattage than the alternator can handle. Well, at least I know the EcoFlow does. I'm actually not too sure about the Renergy, but you can go within the app to adjust the parameters. So with anything, this will burn up your alternator before any of these devices will because of the extra technology in them to make sure that they don't overdo it. So that is that with the comparison between the Renergy and the EcoFlow. Hopefully you see why the EcoFlow is a much better buy, especially for around the same price. They both produce 800 watts. But this one doesn't even come complete. You still need to buy an 80 amp fuse. This one comes with all the fuse you need. Heck, even this inverter came with all of the fuses that you need. It has two 40 amp fuses on board already in there. And it came with two extra 40 amp fuses. It has a lot more things to wire up. It's bigger they weigh about the same. This looks like it would, well, no, ouch. Uh, no, that weighs more. <laughs> that definitely weighs more. And it has a manual component here where you cannot change this from the app, which is annoying because what if this is in a hard to get to spot uh, and you'd have to stop what you're doing to get out and go adjust the thing. Whereas with the EcoFlow, you could just pop into your app like you saw us do and adjust and control everything from there. Look at this. We're at 90% already. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Leave your comments. I want to hear your thoughts so I can debunk them or confirm them. And I will see you guys next video.